going on everybody Grim Repair here today we're going to be changing out the crank position sensor on an older 3800 series General Motors motor this one happens to be in a Oldsmobile Delta 88 but it's going to be pretty much the same for the others tools you're going to need are a three quarter inch to remove the wheel an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter and an 18 millimeter to remove the sensor battery cable and the uh, loosen the tensioner you're gonna need it I don't know if I said 13 millimeter you're gonna need a puller you're gonna need a one and one eighth inch socket and a breaker bar or an impact you're gonna need a feeler gauge some extensions a jack and jack stands I'm gonna make sure you get an AC Delco sensor some of the other ones we've had issues with this isn't my first time having to do this and if you break the bracket that holds the sensor, you can buy another bracket. This one actually comes with a standard brand sensor, but I'm not gonna use it because I've already had issues with the standard brand sensor. We're gonna take an eight millimeter and remove the negative post on the battery. Then we're gonna take an 18 millimeter I'm gonna go counterclockwise with it and go down here to the belt tensioner. I've already removed the belt, but you're just gonna go down there, take tension off the belt, pull the belt out. If you forget the wiring, the belt diagram is right here. You don't have to remove the wheel, makes it a little bit easier. It's definitely gonna make filming better, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. this is the harmonic balancer what we're gonna do is remove that big nut there big bolt there in the center it's a one and one eighth I've already loosened it but you can use an impact to get it off or a breaker bar it will be tight and we're gonna leave it in there a couple threads and we pulled it off with one of these two jaw pullers just went around it and tightened it down and it, it actually came off really easily it, you barely turn it and it popped off because I've already had to remove it mine will just slide right out but when you remove it you want to be careful not to bang knees on anything or you could damage them and this is what the crank sensor is gonna gonna read so it needs to be needs to be in good shape you want to check it make sure nothing's broken or bent and here's the crank sensor it's clamped into this bracket here you got two 13 millimeter bolts that hold that bracket in up top and at the bottom so we're going to go ahead and remove those one there's two and because we were screwing around with the old crappy off-brand sensors so many times this bracket actually cracked that's why we're replacing the bracket you want to be careful when you're tightening this clamping bolt down you want to go to 30 inch pounds which isn't very tight otherwise this bracket could break I'm just gonna reach in there and unplug the crank sensor. Yours will still be mounted in that bracket most likely, so probably wanna do this before you remove the bracket, but it just pulls out. All right, so the sensor is gonna sit in this bracket like this. And it's kind of a tight fit here. But anyway, it's gonna be mounted into this bracket like this, and this sensor is going to go into these teeth like this and I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to film so I'm showing you now before it's in the car but you want to use a feeler gauge we're going to go to point zero two zero and we're going to stick it in between the outside of the sensor and the uh, first 
part of the ring and push it all the way against it and that'll give it enough clearance to where it's not hitting anything when it's rotating and it'll it'll make it uh, that's that's where you want to keep it is that distance away from this ring and you want to check it in a couple different locations so rotate the crank a little bit check it check it make sure it's not hitting we're gonna go ahead and put that in And these these are these are in there tight, so I'm gonna push them in pretty straight, like that. And I'm gonna just kind of center it. I don't really know exactly where it's gonna end up yet, so. And then this bolt is gonna come in through the bottom. And again, don't go super tight with it. We're not gonna tighten it down until we get this positioned where we want it but it's an eight millimeter to tighten that nut or bolt up. And there's an alignment hole here that slides over a dowel that's on the engine. So you're gonna get that slid over that. And put these 13 millimeters back in there. Two 13 millimeter bolts. this harmonic dampener there's a keyway here that slides into the the slot here and it's on the crank so you can't really put it on all the way you just want to make sure you're pushing it on all the way and you line up that keyway with this keyway here on the crank being careful not to damage that ring just line it up kind of twist it around until you hear it feel it lock into the keyway you want to make sure that those rings aren't hitting the sensor or it won't seat all right there we go i'm going to go up top and check it if we need to push it in some more we're going to put this in between like i showed earlier like i said it's going to be kind of hard to film it but it's down there on the crank and i got a pretty decent gap on the outside so i'm going to put the feeler gauge in between and just push it in toward the crank i need to rotate it a little bit because there's a gap by the sensor so i need to get it to where there's part of the metal next to the sensor so I have something to put the feeler gauge in between I'm just gonna do that with the with the uh, one and one eighth socket and a ratchet just spin it a little bit I'm going down there with the feeler gauge all right now I got the feeler gauge in between now I'm just gonna reach in and push it toward the crank now that it's tight I'm gonna snug up that eight millimeter clamping bolt kind of see what we're doing here from the bottom all right now i'm going to tighten it up very very lightly the eight millimeter tighten this bolt up tighten it to the vehicle manufacturer's torque specs now i'm going to rotate it and make sure that it's not hitting that sensor go back under check it out looks pretty good Sensor is plugged in. I'm going to route the belt back on. All right, there we go. Make sure it's not hanging off anywhere. Now we're gonna tighten the negative post back on the battery. We're gonna start her up, make sure she's running right. All right, seems to be running pretty good. Like I said, I've gone through multiple off-brand sensors 
And GM's just real picky about it. You, you want to use a GM sensor on this job so you're not doing it more than once. But anyway, we're going to put the wheel back on, tighten it to the vehicle manufacturer's torque specs, and that's it. High five, you did it. <laughs>